Okay, you can set a description here if you want to, or ignore it. So I'm saying whenever I get a client ident identifying itself as an AP1250, I'm going to send back the controller management IP address. And what is the IP address? Well, you have two ways of fixing this value. The first one is to click here, you say edit array, and when you edit this array, you can enter the IP address of your controller. I'm not going to do that, because if I do that, it's going to fix the value of the controller management IP address regardless of the scope you're in. That's a global definition you're doing here at, this, at the scale of the controller itself. So if you send an IP address here, you're going to send this IP address to any scope within which the option 43 was enabled. So I prefer to define the exact IP address on a per scope basis. So I'm just leaving this uh, array empty here, I'm just defining the containers and I'm going to define the values within the options of each scope. So I'm going to get to the scope 10.1.3.0 which is my access point scope and in the scope option I'm going to say right click, configure options and of course among the list you have already a few click here you probably recognize my router and so on so we have quite a few uh, classical options which are already defined here I'm gonna click to advanced and I'll probably find out my AP identifier option kind of class for which the only option I've defined is this option 241 so I click the option 241 and you see I get the same field as before but here as I'm within 10.1.3.0 subnet I'm going to define the controller that has to be sent back for the access point only for that subnet. And for each subnet, I will be able to send a different IP address or a different controller IP address if I want to. As you can see, I could add several controllers. And as we have an array type of field, I'll be able to send several IP addresses. And as soon as I click OK, as you can see here, in my scope, I will be able to send back IP addresses to my access points about this controller. So that's on the Windows server. If you were on the on the router on an iOS or layer 3 uh, switch, it's actually simpler. If I say a show run here, I have um, a few scopes defined already. And one is set for VLAN 10. As you can see here, it's a classical scope where I say network 10.1.1.0. Default router is 10.1.1.1. The domain name here I return is cisco.com. And I already have an option 43 set here, which is sending an hex value. What? Hex value? What is that? Yeah, I'm going to show you in a second. As you can see here, you only need to define one line, option 43. It seems to be consistent in most Cisco documentation to define only the option 43. But I'm from the old school, from the aerospace school. And in this school we say, well, if you do that, you're sending back the option 43 to all clients, regardless of who they are which means that many devices may get information from your DHCP server, may get all these options and will just have a useless option 43 that will be dropping for nothing. If you are talking to a network designer, he will probably tell you, hey, you know what? Each scope should be, def should be defined for the type of devices you're expecting in that subnet. So if your subnet is set for access points, there is no reason why you would have any laptop in that subnet. So you don't need to define an option 60. But if you want to make it clean, you could define it. So you just go conf t, you go to IP DHCP pool VLAN 10 in my case. Oops. Too many fingers. And to define an option 60, you just say option, option 60. And you can see you can have a, a different format, but the easiest way is to say ASCII. And you just define Cisco space AP. Oops. C1250 and that's it as soon as you have this option defined you're actually saying whenever somebody identifies itself as being a Cisco AP1250 then and only then are we going to send back the option 43 and as you can see my option 43 is an X how does that work well once you've done it twice it's pretty easy you first say option 43 and as you can see, you have several formats. You can say ASCII, HEX, Instance, and IP. But I have a bad news. The only format that you can use to send back a controller IP address is HEX. You have IP and ASCII because, you know, option 43 is vendor-specific. So it depends on the vendor, and it depends on what kind of information you want to send back. 
so you could be sending any type of information but if you want to send an IP address of a controller this option 241 we define in, in Windows it has to be hex otherwise the XML will just not get it so in that case you have to say hex and the way this information is sent is pretty simple once you've done it twice once again you first say F1 and then you give the number of bytes that you're going to send back bytes yes bytes because the management IP address if it's one management IP address one controller it's one IP address so it's four bytes and you would say four bytes are to follow if you send two IP addresses that's two times four bytes and you would say okay eight bytes three IP addresses 12 and so on so in my case I'm going to send back only one single IP address so I'm going to say four bytes are to follow and you just add the IP address of your controller in hex format so in my case the IP address I want to send back is 10.1.1.10 what is that in hex well if you're used to hex you may calculate it uh, automatically but if you're not you can do just what I did here decimal 10 is x a so when I want to send 10 I'm going to send a but as you know each byte has to be two digits in hex so it's going to be 0 a 1 in decimal is 1 in hex as well so I'm going to send 0 1 so if I want to send 10.1.1.10 I'm going to send 10 first so that's 0 a then 1 0 1 then 1 0 1 then 10 0 a that's it option 43 hex f1 0 4 to say 4 bytes follow and the 4 bytes are 0 a 0 1 0 1 0 a that's pretty easy as soon as you've done that as soon as your access point boots up and tries to get an IP address from a DHP server it's going to say control IP address I just did it before showing in this video 10.1.1.10 uh, .1 obtained through DHCP. I'm here connected to the uh, access point console port. So you can see the access point tells you I got the IP address from the DHCP. So if the option works well, as soon as you reboot the access point, you know. If your option is not defined properly, well, you'll see the access point tell you a uh, control IP address did not get any control IP address from the DHCP server. So it means that your hex probably didn't, wasn't entered well. Or if your hex translation is wrong, the exponent is going to tell you as well because you're going to say control address 10.52 whatever obtained by the HTTP and say 10.52 that's not the one I want to give so that's probably a hex conversion issue the only thing w w which is really hard here is to uh, figure out this F104 and so on and so forth so I have an um, exercise for you I want to send back two IP addresses actually instead of one I would like to send one 10.1.1.10 that's the one I'm sending now but I also would like to send 10.20.20.20 .20 so what I would like you to do is to pause the video for a few minutes and try to figure out how you would write this option 43 line if you wanted to send 10.1.1.10 and 10.20.20.20 .20 .20 .20. okay I hope you pause the video and try to figure out yourself so I want to send 10.1.1.10 and 10.20.20.20 .20. so the first one is 10.1.1.10 we already have this uh, hex value here but the first thing to change here is that I'm going to change I'm going to send two IP addresses that is to say 8 bytes so I need to say I'm sending 8 bytes then of course I have my first address 0A 010108 and that's my 10.1.1.10 then I also need to send 10.20.20.20 well 10 is still the same 0a the only thing I need to calculate here is what 20 is in hex it's actually gonna be 14 but let's calculate 20 decimal in hex that's 14 so 10.20.20.20 is going to be 0a 14 14 14 in hex and that's it if you do a short run and you go to your DHCP scope you should see your VLAN 10 and these two values here so these two ways the Windows way and the iOS ways are enough for you to configure pretty much most of the devices you may face in the real world I hope this was useful for you I would like to thank you for watching